Hi guys, welcome back to this channel. My name is Laura from PleadingHealer.com and today I want to talk about fake ascension symptoms and what they could be instead, what's really going on, and also the danger behind all of those symptoms and not taking them serious or thinking they are part of your ascension, so-called ascension, new age terminology. So a little while ago, I already had a short video out. It was like a 15 second long or one minute long video. And I was talking about the fake ascension symptoms or rather there was another person speaking about it. And then some people appear to be curious about it. And that's why I am making this longer video. We will go through some of the symptoms, what they could be instead and what's really going on. And for the occasion of that, I'm just going to share the screen just so you guys can follow along. So what I also want to say from the beginning is I do not believe that the symptoms are fake. So I just want to make that differentiation before we dive into the actual symptoms. Um, the symptoms can be very valid and very real, especially for people who are experiencing those. You know, a few of those symptoms are going to be like dizziness or body aches or just the typical being awake at a certain time of, of day or night. But what is fake is that the new age, that the entire community that, that terms itself new age or fake spirituality, that they're selling it to you as someone who doesn't really know better as an ascension symptom, because the ascension does not exist in that sense. You know, the entire ascension terminology it's just fakery and BSery to make you believe that you have to accept it, that you're going to be part of this 5D high vibrational community, which all of that is just another trap. They're luring you down all of those little paths and alleyways that really get you nowhere. And people who have been on that path for a long, long time who really know that it gets you nowhere, you know, like we all know, we've all kind of been in this situation, right? It's like, oh, okay, yeah, it's so great. We're ascending into 5D, but then the crash comes and you're like, oh no, who's going to take my trash out? Who's going to pay my bills? What now? So um, yeah, it's just another be like fakery. And so let's just go through some of these symptoms and whether or not the 5D ascension exists. I think some people were asking about that too. So I had an interview with someone, I think it was two years ago where I actually explained it quite well. Um, all these are dimensions, the entire concept that there are only these 12 dimensions when indeed there are a million different ones, a million different realities and that they want you to ascend to 5D is just another way to kind of get your soul pieces scattered all across those realities, all across those dimensions. And you'd be well advised to call those soul pieces back real quick, especially if you were part of the New Age Trap community, because it really doesn't get you anywhere. Christianity also has a concept of ascension. I do want to point that out. And they call it different. I'm not sure if they call it salvation or if they call it something similar to ascension. But you'll find in a lot of these cult mentality type of communities, which religion is one, the new age is one, other types of spiritual beliefs are one, you will always find the same concepts over and over again. You know, you need to worship something outside of you. You need to worship angels, archangels, spirit misguides. You need to worship something, some God above you when you're talking about religion. And so for the new age, they term all of this ascension and 5D and living in this high vibrational community when that really isn't it. And in religion, it's called something else. You know, they kind of like, oh, yes, you will ascend to these higher realms once you die or whatever, depending on the belief system you're a part of. So no, in that sense, whatever the new age is selling you as 5D does not exist. Absolutely not. And I know a lot of these spiritual leaders will set hell in motion to make you believe where you are experiencing all these symptoms that you're experiencing is perfectly normal. You shouldn't question it. It's just all part of you being in this higher vibrational mindset and everything's okay. When in reality, you are most likely either being attacked, you are experiencing a form of poisoning and radiation, and you definitely have to clear that out of your system. And in addition to that, it's most likely also getting to your body in terms of imbalances like mind, body, and physical imbalances. So let's go through a few of these symptoms. I'm going to pull up an article that I found. 
And I think they listed 20 symptoms on them, which I'm going to go through them. They're going to be listed in a different order than I put on this list. I'm just going to go through these and then I'll explain afterwards what that could be instead. Um, what this article is saying, you know, first of all, it starts off saying, how do you know if you're going through the ascension process? The growing pains you may have experienced as a child similar to the ascension process can be painful. If you're one of the individuals who agreed to participate in this radical shift on earth. So I already have a few videos out there saying how you did not agree to come here. You were actually kind of tricked and forced and coerced to come here wherever we are, whether or not we're on earth or in a completely different realm, different reality is a bit irrelevant for this video. I'll have other videos out on that. And you can also check my past videos. There are a lot of them on this concept. And then this article goes on saying, here are some symptoms you might be experiencing. Number one, feeling as though you are in a pressure cooker or an intense energy, feeling stress. And then they're giving the explanation for that, which I'm not going to name because I don't want to confuse and mislead people further. It's already confusing enough to go through all these symptoms and actually scratch your head and be like, how are people actually believing this? You know, how are they believing this is an ascension symptom when it's very clear to me and others that it's almost the opposite? Number two, unusual aches and pains through different parts of your body. Number two, a feeling of disorientation, not knowing where you are, a loss of a sense of place. So that's actually pretty severe. I think that was number three, by the way. Um, when you don't really know where you are, for me, that almost feels like a mental illness, mental disorder. Number four, waking at night between 2 and 4 a.m. Number five, memory loss. Also something that you should not take lightly. I do have to say that. And then number six, seeing and hearing things. Loss of identity, number eight, feeling out of body, periods of deep sleeping, number 10, heightened sensitivities to your surroundings, such as crowds, noise, foods, TV, other human voices, all of that. Uh, number 11, you don't feel like doing anything. And they're calling this a rest period or rebooting. Uh, usually when you feel kind of sluggish like that, it means a lot of energy was trying to get to you. And it also has to do with them uh, trying to poison the environment around you. Number 12, an intolerance for lower vibrational things. It's always a good one. Of the 3D, such as societal structures, healing modalities, etc. So just to clarify, if you're watching this video, you're in the 3D. We're all in the 3D. There's no one above you in the 5D and the 7D, all these things. It's complete rubbish. Um, whoever wants you to believe they're in the 5D when they're still typing all their messages somehow on YouTube or Instagram or Telegram or whatever is completely misleading to begin with. I know there are a lot of those ego gurus, spiritual gurus out there who want you to believe they're already in 5D, but they're not. <laughs> Number 13, a loss of desire for food. Number 14, a sudden disappearance of friends, activities, habits, jobs, and residences. Number 15, you absolutely cannot do certain things anymore. When you try to do your usual routine and activities, it feels downright awful. <laughs> Number 16, days of extreme fatigue. 17, a need to eat often, uh, along with what feels like attacks of low blood sugar. Number 18, experiencing emotional ups and downs, weeping. Um, our emotions are our outlet for release. We are releasing a lot is what they're saying. Number 19, a wanting to go home as if everything's over. You don't belong here anymore. Number 20, feeling you are going insane or must be developing a mental illness of some sort. So it's interesting that they even put this in this article, how low vibrational of them to do that, right? Um, 21, anxiety and panic. 22, depression. 23, vivid, wild, and sometimes violent dreams. 24, night sweats. 25, your plans suddenly change in midstream and you go in a completely different direction. 
uh, number 26, you have created a situation that seems like your worst nightmare with many worst nightmare aspects to it. So I guess it was more than 20. For some reason, the article was kind of saying, oh, these are only 20 somethings. But anyhow, the point is, um, there's a lot that they try to sell you as so-called ascension symptoms. And a few of these are very, very concerning. Okay, especially the ones that kind of involve the depression, anxiety and panic attacks and all of that. Now, we're going to go through what these could really be. I'm not going to uh, say my opinion on every single point here, but I do have to say a lot of these are a mix of several things. First of all, when people are opening themselves up, especially people who are part of the New Age trap community and all of that, when they're opening themselves up to entities, you know, when they're opening themselves up to talking to these channelers or even channeling something themselves, they're opening themselves up to entities. And these entities can either attach to that person or they can full on possess that person. So we're talking about the difference between entity attachments and entity possession. Now, when an entity attaches to you, you might very well feel like you're going to go insane because you might hear voices in your head somehow. Uh, you know, we have that a lot. You don't even have to be part of the New Age community to go insane. You can literally just be someone who's kind of already having some form of hormonal imbalance in your body. You know, you kind of have the predisposition to be schizophrenic or anxious or depressed, all of those things. And then some sort of entity just kind of triggers something. And that's how you have all the news on how this 17 year old boy murdered his mother or neighbor and all of that, you know, so that's more of the extreme side. But that is full on an entity attachment, if not even possession. It depends on the case. And you have a lot of those cases over these past few years. If you really pay attention to it, uh, you know, the news are always mentioning, oh, yeah, and he heard voices in his head before he committed this crime or murder or whatever it was. And it makes sense because the astral realm in and of itself has been completely out of control from 2020 on, which I believe I already mentioned in a previous video. If not, it might be worth doing a separate video on that. Because before that, like 2018 was before, yeah, it was the last time before 2020, I really checked into it. It wasn't as chaotic. It was already kind of getting a bit lettered and clustered and chaotic, but not as chaotic as March 2020 and on. So there's a lot going on that has really been pushed and driven people insane, as we can tell over these past few years, right? So you have that going on which is pretty severe for people who can't differentiate between, you know, entities in and of itself. They think it belongs to them. They think it's these benevolent spirit misguides, angels, archangels, whatever. The new cage tries to sell them as good, but it really isn't. Like no entity should ever be in your field, period. I know there are people out there who are like, oh, I don't want anything. I don't want a good entity removed. I only want a bad entity removed. That's not how it works. You shouldn't have any entity on you to begin with. You should be clear and entity less. Entity less. <laughs> Sounds a bit weird, but I guess that's what you would call it. Um, in order to be able to tap into your own intuition and insight. And you don't need any entity telling you anything. You don't need to channel anything for that. So the entire seeing and hearing things is just another level to this entire entity attachment, entity possession game. And in addition to all of that, let me just pull up this last slide here. Um, you could be experiencing a full on psychic attack as well. So there are a variety of different psychic attacks and I actually go through it in my psychic protection course. I also discuss curses, spells and voodoo and how you can empower yourself from that in addition to energy management exercises. So it's a pretty well-rounded course, but there are different levels to them. So I would say you have like the lower level attacks, which are kind of nagging your energy away and, and they're kind of just chipping a bit by bit aside. And then you have the full-on psychic attack. And when you experience the full-on one, it could very well lead to like the entity possession, entity attachment that I just discussed. But the full-on one can also pretty much feel like one of these nightmares that they give as a symptom, you know, kind of like, oh my gosh, I had like the worst dream ever, or my life is turning into a nightmare. The waking up at night between 2 and 4 a.m., that is basically ghost hour, in my opinion. So that is really when spirits are going to be the most active. They can be active at 8 p.m. They can be active at 1 p.m. too. 
or 8 a.m. in the morning. But for some reason, between like midnight and 3 or 4, 4 a.m. in the morning, wherever you are, that really will be when spirits get full on into action. So if you are already opening yourself up through all these rituals that the New Age performs or also religion and other belief systems perform, when you are opening your, your energy field up to that, it's no wonder you're going to attract more and more entities towards you. And so it's very important to shield yourself from that. Okay. And the shielding techniques are also discussed in the psychic protection course. So we have the psychic attack, the entity attachments, entity possession, um, the curses, spells, and voodoo can legit make you sick. So when people are talking about dizziness or maybe even developing some form of disease like cancer and those type of things, I know people who, you know, I, I was friends with a person from Africa. He was from an African country that is known for voodoo. His family uh, was, was meddling with voodoo and his one brother actually passed away supposedly from voodoo obviously scientifically you can't prove it but he actually had one of those illnesses i'm not sure if it was cancer or something else because they were under severe attack over there and if you really dealt with like very strong voodoo the way you find it in the caribbean you also find it in indonesia and you find it in those african countries you know what i'm talking about because i myself have experienced it too like this is no joke you know and so when you start experiencing some form of something attaching to your foot or something, some, some dizziness or just something not feeling right, it, if, if you think it's a curse spell or voodoo, it could very well be. These type of curse spells and voodoo, by the way, they can really mess up your life. You know, I don't know people who've gone into car accidents because they were cursed or someone put a spell on them. So it's something you want to remove for sure. You don't want to have this. Is it easy to re to remove? I have removed it because I know what I'm doing. I've been doing this for a little while already, you know, more than half a decade at this point. I know what to look out for. If you're newer to this, it might be harder, but it's not impossible. And really visualization and all of that is pretty much everything in the process of it. But sure, you can absolutely remove it. You just kind of have to know what to look out for and what you're dealing with. And so I have people in my life who think curses, spells, and voodoo don't exist if you don't believe in them. <laughs> I just always like to laugh in their face. And I'm like, wow, how naive are you? <laughs> I hope you will never be in a situation where someone puts a voodoo spell on you because that's, that is really serious. Um, so ignorance does not protect you. You know, ignorance is not bliss. I just want to point that out too, because uh, for some reason, some people think if they don't believe in this, it's not going to manifest in their life. No, that's absolutely not true. It's just that you won't know that you have it in your life and it's just going to get harder on you because you, you don't even believe in that. Now, another huge one is the EMF radiation or rather poisoning that's really going on. That's really ramped up over these past few years too. And so when people talk about a lot of these symptoms, right? Like, let's just go back to this one list that I had um yeah legit like the unusual aches and pains in their body uh even like the periods of deep sleeping or just like the sleep cycle interruption all of that is a huge sign that especially with the sleep cycle interruption that you're dealing with a huge emf rays and radiation in your vicinity you know if you're in a bedroom that has a wi-fi router all of that on but also with all these cell phone towers that were really pulled up over the past few years it's a huge sign there are certain things you can do about that too. There are actually physical things you can do about EMF radiation. Like there are certain types of paints that protect you from it. There are other shields, you know, actual physical things that you can put up all around you uh, on your walls and whatever to protect you from that. But once again, you actually have to be aware of what's going on. In the worst case scenario, you might have to move somewhere else. Um, because I had that scenario happen to me when I was in Australia a few years ago where I was in the cities and the EMF poisoning was really getting to my nervous system. And so at the end of my stay, which is a few months in, I could really notice it and people around me could notice it too. You know, you were almost not your own self anymore. And so when people are talking about, um, well, a sudden disappearance of friends, <laughs> that could be part of that reason. No, it's more like, uh, you don't feel like yourself anymore. You know, it's kind of like you're feeling like you're going insane, all of that. It's a mix of a lot of things. And unfortunately, with this entire EMF pollution, radiation, and all the things in our system, 
which they're pumping into our atmosphere. Also when they're spraying our skies, like all of those things, those can be heavy metals, nanos getting into our system and they can literally mess with our own internal balance. You know, it can mess with our hormonal imbalance, the same with the foods, the water, everything. And so oftentimes it's just a mix of a lot of things. You know, if you're not eating 100% clean, which it is hard nowadays, I do admit that. If you are not aware that everything around you is infiltrated, you know, the food, the water, the skies, the air you breathe. And if you don't really detox on a regular schedule or almost daily or a few times a week, it's going to be kind of hard because you need to get all, get rid of a lot of things in your system. In addition, having to get rid of all the entities in your field, especially if you are calling them in through doobies, rituals and events and meditations and whatnot. So in short, I think that kind of covers it in a way or another. Let me just look at my other notes that I had written that down here. Uh, there's another thing, right? The solar flare. So for some reason, New Agers always like to believe in solar flares and what is it? The Schumann resonance, right? The Schumann resonance and all of that. So like I already discussed in this machine, the matrix machine theory, theory video, those are all just machines that the controllers the governments, all of those have, the ones that are kind of in charge of this reality of keeping us asleep and all of those things, those are just the machines they have. And they're projecting that into us, like basically all around us, you know, all of the manipulation techniques that they have. And so solar flares is just another one of those. And also when people feel that, you know, they, they feel hungover, even though they don't drink or whatever, and it's kind of like, oh, this is a, an energy hangover, all of that. No, you were probably bombarded with all of these rays and pollution coming from the machines, which they would call scalar, like a scalar weapon or solar flashes or solar flares, whatever they even call that. Your your system is so fatigued from all of that, so poisoned and so radiated from it that it obviously is going to need a day or two to just kind of sleep through it. And so also very interesting that one of the symptoms was, oh... Um, you know, we have to actually, days of extreme fatigue, your body needs sleep and all of those things. A desire, a loss of desire for food or even a desire to really eat sugary things. So a lot of these symptoms I personally even went through and I can attest that it is a real thing. You know, I myself actually went through a phase where I had to eat so much sugar, especially when I was giving readings back in the days, like, you know, this is like, well, before I knew about any of this, so I was like, wow, uh, I need so much sugar in my system. It's literally because <laughs> your body is trying to overcompensate. So it's most likely that your, your diet in and of itself is a bit out of balance. So your body's trying to overcompensate and you most look likely also need to ground. And so a way for your body to ground in a not very healthy way is through sugar which you can do a few times here and there, absolutely, even though sugar is basically a toxic substance to your body. But sugar addiction is a thing. I do realize that too. So your body, when your body really craves sugar, it's another form of you need to actually eat very dense food. You know, you need to really ground your body because sugar is not going to do over time. Sugar is just some like a one-off that you should maybe do once every blue moon or whatever, but it's just not going to do over time. You're just kind of starving your body. And what it really needs is, is grounding, grounding nourishment, grounding foods and all of those things, especially in these times where we're just bombarded with everything. Grounding is really, really important. And so, you know, it's also when people are saying, oh, I feel like I'm going insane and all of that. A lot of that does have to do with you not feeling grounded. You know, there was a period in my time, I think it was in 2017 or 2018, where I literally felt I was walking from home to the subway and from the subway to where I had to go. I was like, wow, I think I'm literally going to lift off the ground. Like I feel so ungrounded. And that was legit because no one had showed me any real grounding techniques of any substance. And because those were still back in the days where, you know, oh yeah, the new age is harmless, all of those things when it really isn't, you know, it's probably all these entities that are attaching to you and whatnot. There were a few more things that I wanted to say, but I can't really find them anymore so in short also the emotional ups and downs it's a form of imbalance most likely hormonal imbalance same with the dep well depression can have a lot of different causes as I already said in my mental illness video 
But there's a few things you need to just pay attention to. And a lot of these are just forms of more severe things going on. And so you need to really be aware of that. Um, and not just call in more random entities like the new age really wants you to do. So I hope this kind of helped you, especially if you are going through it. And I know we just had like this huge event happening where people most likely called in a whole bunch of woo woo and a whole bunch of what they don't know, even what they called in. So just be aware of it. And uh, if you need help, you can always reach out. I hope this has helped you and talk to you very soon. Have a wonderful one.